Hello, everybody. This is from Milwaukee to Nashville. I'm Jaden Goodwill, and we got Christopher Draves here. What's going on, everybody? Our show is brought to you by the wonderful folks at Hockey Locker, 2002 West Hard Avenue, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. You can call them at 414-800-7585 or visit their website at HockeyLockerMilwaukee.com. You can get all your hockey needs, all your uh, skate sharpened, your uh, gear cleaned and sanitized. Uh, you can get your Admiral jerseys. They have some throwback NHL jerseys. They have a lot of CCM equipment. They're, they uh, have a lot of CCM equipment for availability, so you should try to give them a purchase. They got discount ice skates, referee gear, you name it, they got it. And they're, they'll give you uh, they'll give you good quality service. Tell them we sent you. Yeah, he likes that. <laughs> Trying to make that man some money. All right. So while we're here today, yeah, why are we here? Today started Florida Everblades training camp. Oh, we're doing that video, okay. Yeah. Oh, we're doing two. Yeah. Yeah. All right, so today I did start the Florida Everblades training camp. Um, according to their roster, um, they, they have, have 25 guys. They have 25 players. 23 skaters, two goalies. I, Essentially, because all I saw was two goalies on the list. Uh, 12 skaters. Uh, or 12 forwards, 11 defensemen, and two goalies. Um, that's not the final product because uh, who says uh, the Admirals don't send them anybody? But so far, we have sent them three players. Yep. All right. So we sent them um, Arvin Atwal, uh, Spencer Young, and uh, Michael Huntenbrinker. Mm. You said it right, Huntenbrinker. Yeah, it's just depressing to me. <laughs> well, yeah, because uh, the NHL and AHL is still unclear if they're going to have a season or not. All right. Hey, uh, Everblades Flint, if fans, uh, in the comments below this video, could you give us a heads up whether or not you're going to have fans in attendance for your games? Because it's not looking good for the NHL and AHL as far as having fans in attendance. I can answer that for you already. All oh, training... I'm just trying to interact with the people I like our videos, fool. Excuse me for asking questions. Actually, what the real question should be, how many fans? Well, same difference. Well, technically, the Admirals can have 200 fans in their building. Yeah. Technically, but will they? Who knows? All right. So um, according to their website, due to current COVID protocols, all training camp and regular season practices will be closed to the public. Well, that's practice. I was talking about games. Hang on. I'll get into that. Um, however, the Everblades will host two preseason games on Friday, December 4th at 7.30 and Saturday, December 5th at 7 at Hertz Arena against the uh, in-state rival of the Orlando Solar Bears. By the way, one of my favorite logos in hockey. I thought you said it was the Swamp Rabbits. No, I was talking. Well, I said one of my favorite logos in hockey. One of. Oh, okay. I have many. Okay. <laughs> Anyways, it, we'll get to your point about how many fans will be allowed in the arena. Um, so they will be open to that. They said these the preseason games are open to the public this Friday and Saturday. Saturday. So to open how to, many? Open to the public, meaning free. I don't know, but how many? Who knows? What that Three, my original who knows? question? I was that's why I'm asking Everblades fans that watch these videos, could you give us a heads up if you're actually allowing fans? All right. Before we get further into this, we do have some ECHL news. Oh in the ECHL today, um the Jacksonville uh Iceman, I confused by the name, what does Jacksonville know about ice, but snow cones. <laughs> okay. and uh they play hockey down there apparently so ice or indoor ice room there. all right anyway um they have some new ownership uh additions to their ownership uh we have tim tebow uh miles jack and former uh, jacksonville jaguar star reggie hayward uh miles jack is also a Former Jaguar, current, current, um, inside, current, current middle linebacker for them. You know more about the Jaguars' current team than I do, and I watch a lot more NFL than you. Okay. I play a lot of men. <laughs> okay, okay. You pay attention to the teams that nobody does. I don't even think I've ever met a Jaguar fan. 
I'm sorry, Florida. Just saying. You know your team sucks. Um, I'm just saying. <laughs> uh, T- Tampa Bay's not doing that bad. You mean uh, Tampa Bay? Anyway, uh, um, that, that this is a good thing yeah. for the ECHL that they're bringing in these these owners. They do have money. It will help them. Yeah. And it will also help the ECHL when they see teams like Jacksonville having current sports players that are in that city come in and, and take some ownership in. And just, you know, it's basically a money investment. For Not them. to mention uh, the Jacksonville Icemen will probably win the championship this season because all T-Ball has to do is call up God, ask for a miracle, and there you go. You oh. got Jesus as an owner now because you got T-Ball. So, sorry, everybody. Uh, God's going to help the Icemen win. <laughs> what? That's why I was doing the whole pray thing when you said Tim T-Ball. That's what he's not All right. For. So other than that, uh, in-state rival uh, Orlando Solar Bears signed Garrett Sparks, uh, formerly of the Chicago Wolves. Yep. Um, he went uh, with the Wolves last season in 26 appearances. He went 8, 14, and 4 with a 2.57 goals against average. And no, a- that's a 2.75 goals against and 0.908 save percentage. Um, he also had one game of an appearance for the uh, Golden Knights. Uh, he played the entirety of his ECHL career with Orlando um, from 2013 to 2016 and 48 contests went 26, 30, uh, 13 and three with six shutouts, a 2.42 goals against average and a 0.933 save percentage. And 2014, 2015. Uh, the same percentage was 0.936. What are you reading? In 2014, 2015, oh, oh, Garrett oh, yeah. Sparks led the ECHL with a 0.936 save percentage, setting a team sing, team single season record. Um, also uh, having five shutouts, which also set a single season mark. Uh, goals against average also set a season mark, and 21 wins, which since has been broken. Yeah. Well, anyways, with these videos, we're going to be covering the Everblades, and we'll also cover the rest of the ECHL, because we need to get some content out there. And hey, hockey's hockey. I don't mind. All right. So for the Everblades, <laughs> um, looking at what you're getting from guys like, we already covered your whole roster coming in. Yeah. So we're going to talk about what you're getting with guys that Milwaukee sent you. Yeah, because we already know what you're capable of based off of the guys you've had last season because we've covered your team last season. Um, yes, and we're also going to take a look at their uh, one of their newest sightings, uh, Adrian Clark. Um, Spencer Young played for Providence. Uh, he was... Providence... College. Yeah. University College, Providence College. Yeah, University of Providence. Well, it's technically it does say Providence. Oh, College. okay, okay. Um, last That's season he was the captain for Providence College. He played 32 games, one two goals, one assist, three points, and a minus six. Um, to anything else, uh, he was not drafted. He's 23 years of age, so he's still young. He's a good defenseman. Uh, he's 5'10", 185 pounds, shoots right-handed, which is a rare quality in defensemen. What do you mean? There's a lot of left-handed shot defensemen. Any reason for that, or is it just a weird coincidence? Um, it's actually been a predominant thing since about 1994, um, before that most defensemen were actually right-handed. It's mm-hmm. been quite So odd. it's just a weird thing. Correct. All right, you guys are familiar with this guy. Michael Hootenbrinker played for uh, Everblades last season. Last two seasons to be No, no, last season. Our last season, for... he played uh, 43 games, 20 goals, 24 assists, 44 points, and a plus 24 with eight penalty minutes. Yeah, he was supposed to make his uh, AHL debut this year, but with COVID-19, yeah, it happens. Um, and then we have Arvin Atwal. He kind of bounced back and forth between the Everblades and the Admirals last season. Yeah, we saw him play in a bunch of games for the Admirals last season. Uh, he played 14 games for the Admirals, no points, no assists, 19 penalty minutes, and a plus one uh, for the Florida Everblades. He played th- 23 games, four goals, four assists, eight points, 100 penalty minutes, yeah. and a plus 13. Well, he, he's a physical player. 
Um, before that, he played with the Cincinnati Cyclones for 65 games, had 10 goals, 29 assists, 214 penalty minutes, and a plus 44. Also that same season, he spent three games with the Rochester Americans where he got two assists, five penalty minutes, and a negative two, or a plus minus or minus two. All right. And then we have Adrian Clark. They don't have much on him, but uh, he's 23 years old, uh, 6'3", uh, 190 pounds, catches left. He is a goaltender. Uh, last season, he played for Dartmouth College. In the NCAA, he had 30 games played. He had a 3.11 goals against average, a 0.897 save percentage, and he had a record of 13, 4, and 13. Yep. Aren't you glad I paid for this thing? One, two. He had four. He had four seasons with Dartmouth. Um, and his worst season was in the 2016, 2017 season, where he played seven games, had a 3.97 goals against average. So he's almost averaging four goals a game. Was a save uh, uh, with a goals against average. His save percentage wasn't much better. He had a 0. 0.83 or 0.837 save percentage with a two one and two record. Um, other than that, we don't got much on him. Uh, oh, he's a college kid, so it's gonna be difficult to like dig up some news on him. Uh, a lot of these guys I see did play for the. Uh, Everblades last season. Hey, Pendenza's back. Yes, uh, Pendenza did sign. Um, we're aware of that. Um, everything else, check our former, our older videos. We pretty much covered everything um, from last season because a lot of these guys are returning players. Uh, oh, Alex Kale, who signed today as well. Uh, he is on a tryout contract. Are you sure it's Kale? It's K I L E. So might be Kale. Well, get it. We'll improve his name. We got a couple. We got what about a week to get ready for the season opener? Uh, he's 26 years old, six foot tall, uh, left wing, shoots left handed. He is in a tryout. He won uh, a championship with the USHL and a NCAA championship. Uh, he played for the Green Bay Gamblers. Yeah, in 2011, 2012, and in 2012 and 2013, he played for the University of Michigan from 2014 through 2017. Uh, marking his highest year in points at uh, with the University of Michigan in 2015, 2016, where he had 38 games, played 16 goals, 18 assists, 34 points, and a plus eight. Yeah, he's since then he's done time with the Rochester Americans. He's played the Cincinnati Cyclones, uh, the Maine Mariners, Utica Comets. He Comets. He was loaned there. Hartford. He's done some time. Lavelle. He was in Lavelle for a while. He's been bouncing around. He's no stranger to the AHL or the ECHL. This is his first year at the Everblades. Um, last season for the Maine Mariners, he played 57 games, had 16 goals, 35 assists, uh, 51 points, and a plus nine. I'm not going to argue. He had 46 uh, penalty minutes, but that's pretty decent, considering uh, some guys have over 100. Yeah, and the ECHL is a tough league. So yeah. um, the one thing I will uh, – I will say about him that the, the number that pops out is there's only it's only in the EC, AHL or yeah only in the AHL in college did he minus have a minus so in the ECHL he's averaging a plus but he's still kind of young so yeah um 26, he's 26 so he's still kind of young by hockey standards yeah hockey standards you're not old until you hit about 33 yeah and that's when it kind of shifts for you of if you aren't there by then you're gonna just flounder around in the minors yeah and uh for him if he could get ahl time like he did with uh laval in 2019 honestly i think he might end up in milwaukee at some point like if milwaukee needs a playoff run yeah i could see some of those things happening um uh, other than that we're going to talk about uh blake winicky uh, after uh, after COVID nineteen snatched one of his, a, uh, he got offered an AHL full year contract with the Admirals, and then COVID nineteen. Actually, it was with the Charlotte Checkers, and they snatched it from him. Wow. He was offered an SPC contract with the Charlotte Checkers. Was going to debut for them. Uh, he signed it on February 29th, 
they had their mandatory five day break yeah. and gone. He had no chance because the guy came back that he was replacing, so he just sat on the bench. Yeah. But then COVID-19 kind of slowed down the process as well because I'm sure he would have got some sort of game time. Um, he, he, but he's coming back because he played last year for the Blades. Yes, uh, he he uh, quoted in saying that this was it was my first call up. I worked hard for it, but it, I was fortunate that I got to play those seven games. I was there for three weeks. He got to play uh, with Laval, but he was about to debut for Charlotte. So it was. This is a kind of a confusing article because it says AHL debut. Um, which Laval and Charlotte is. Yeah, so it's like. I'm, I'm a little confused by it, but we'll go forward with this. Um, he said, I was disappointed uh, that all of our seasons ended so abruptly, but hopefully we will have a strong team in Florida again this year. I think we do. So sh- strong being, uh, according to them, strong being somewhat of an understatement. Um, last year, the Florida Everglades were 43-14-4-2. Tied yeah. atop the league for highest in points. Yeah. Um, they should have had a good playoff run. Yes. I think that when when we look back, it's unfortunate that all this happened. It really hurt the sports world in a lot of ways. Hurt us. Yeah, it hurt us. podcast perspective. Um, uh, some of the guys that I will tell you guys to look out for this season, uh, one of them is uh, Stefan LeBlanc. He's a defenseman. Uh, I would look out for Cameron Hebig. Uh, he's 23 years old. He's a rookie. Uh, I would tell, well, you guys already know to look out for Leif Coe Coper. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, I don't got to say that. Or Hunter Breaker. I don't got to say that. Pedenza don't got to say nothing. Blake Winicky don't got to say McCarran nothing. McCarron, too. John McCarron. Yes. Uh, all aboard the Soul Train. Yeah, yeah. Um, but, you know, we're all, we're, we're as, it's weird how we look back and we didn't have an ECHL affiliate when we came into doing this okay. podcast. And then our second well, year. Well, yeah, we did because we had uh, the first year we had Cincinnati, but we weren't covering them like we do the Everglades. No, the first year we did it, we lost Cincinnati, went to Norfolk. Norfolk got caught for embezzlement mm-hmm. um, or some kind but of. But at the time, we weren't covering them. We just had them connected to it. I think we covered a couple of Norfolk games. No, we didn't. Oh, okay. We didn't start covering ECHL games until last season. Yep, and we were a little bit late to the show. <laughs> yeah, then we start like halfway through. And now this year we're going to be going from beginning to end. Yep, uh, so we're in We're in for this year. Uh, another guy I really would like to keep an eye on is uh, Alex Smith. He's a defenseman, but he can also play right wing. Oh. Ah. It's always good to be versatile. Um, you have, uh, uh, I, if I remember correctly, um, uh, what was that? It was Pendenza. Pendenza played defense for us that one year. Remember, we yeah. had all them injuries, and yeah. a forward stepped in and played defenseman. Yeah. It was Pendenza. So Pendenza can do a little bit of whatever you need him to do. Uh, another guy I'd look at is Miles Powell. He played for Atlanta last season. Speedy skater, uh, smooth, um, good talent. So there's a lot to look forward to, Florida, and we can't wait to get after it. Yeah, um, it's going to be strange with like an entire division of teams not playing in the ECHL, plus a few extras that decided to opt out. Um, Norfolk and a couple others, but... Yeah, like uh, how many games are actually going to be played this season? Like what's the actual schedule total looking like? Hang on a second. Because I highly doubt they're going to have a full season, but... I'm thinking, I, if I remember reading somewhere correctly, I think it was like 30 games, but or 40 games. Well, they're going to they're gonna most likely have a reduced, ske- or a reduced schedule. All right. The ECHL does have an article for it. Thank you. Yes. Uh, 72 games, in a, 13 whoa, 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 whoa. teams... 13 in a... teams who are participating in a 72-game schedule. 72 games amongst 13 teams. Holy crap. Yeah, so we're going to be... We're, we're going to be seeing the same team like 20 times, or it seems like that. Yeah, but it'll, it, it, for us, it's hard. Oh, 13 teams 
how are they doing the, the are they doing it by conference by division uh you scroll the article because i'm kind of, there's a lot of stuff that like i don't know it just says who's playing who it does the eth regular season will be concluded on january on june 6th at the latest yeah um that that's probably about the date that the nhl is shooting for as well so yeah. um under a split scenario of the league with a well, uh, postseason format will be based on the eligible teams from the regular season will be announced on, at a later oh, later day. It's one of those uh, we're going to play it by air type thing. Kind of like college hockey. There's teams that haven't even started yet and then you got some teams that have already played like six games and yeah, it's a it's a mess. It's a mess, but thing at least teams are trying because people realize it's gonna get to that point where either it's not gonna go away. And in order for you to make money and stuff, you're just gonna have to quit being a chick and leave your house and just kind of deal with it. Yeah, it's kind of gonna come down to one of those. It's damned if we do, damned if we don't. It's yeah, a fine so it's worth like, the dollar. So basically, I just put COVID in the category of the 10 billion things that could kill us. Yeah, I mean, it's just another thing that could kill us. It's another thing like pollution that could kill us. Just kind of got to deal with it now, man. That's what the masks are for. The more people that wear masks, the less deaths it seems. So apparently, they're not as worthless as people's claim. But let's get into that in a different video. <laughs> All right. Um, as far as also for those of you who are Florida Everblades fans who like that team, um, right now uh, the January first start date for the NHL probably not going to happen. It's you're looking, looking more like January fifteenth or the latest February first. Okay, so if and, and February first would make sense to a some extent. Well, to some extent, January fifteenth would be good too because there are players that are currently getting in shape and skating with each other at team facilities currently. Yeah, because they were so, getting, they were told that there was so going to be they training camp. So they're not going to need like a full training camp because they're already doing exercise and all that crap now. The beginning of the season might be garbage. But eventually they'll flip the switch and their body will get back to normal and it'll probably get better as the season progresses. Also, if you want to learn more about Admiral's history for Florida Everblades. Oh yeah, you got to plug that. Also, check out the Admiral's History Twitter page and check out Let It Simmer podcast. What's their Twitter handle? At Admiral's History. There you go. Um, uh, you could uh, check out the Let It Simmer podcast. It is on uh, SoundCloud, Google, podcast Wait, let it simmer yeah that's the name of their podcast are you are you serious yes okay you could probably find a link to that on uh, milwaukeeadmirals.com or you can check our page as soon as this video is up yeah we'll have a link um also uh they had uh today they had pekka Ooh, the great wall of nashville um, he talked about some stories from the 06 team where they went to the cup and lost against Hershey. Um, so there was some good stuff in there, and you could learn a lot about hockey history. Yeah, we do. Some... We both follow Admiral's History on Twitter. So at Admiral's History on Twitter, it's a good follow if you want to like, learn about the Admiral's History, duh. <laughs> um, also, uh, in the coming weeks, we're currently doing some studying, some. Of, um, oh, he just recently got us set up for flow hockey. So, yes, we will be watching all the Everblade games and probably some other ECHL games for scouting purposes. Yep, so we know what's going on. <laughs> so that way we don't look like a couple of dummies. More than we already do. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I uh, I thank you all for watching. This has been from Market and Yeah, Echo. keep up the support. Tell your friends. Let's try to get our numbers. I want to hit 2,000 by the end of the year. Oh, uh, well, good luck. But, um, uh, our show is brought by to you. By the end of the year, meaning by next October. Dingus. Okay. Ha! Sure. Or by the end of hockey season. How about that? We'll work with that. Uh, all right. This hockey season is going to be short. That will be a hell of a stretch. But uh, the start of the 20 – it's – but, all right, when Seattle starts playing hockey in the NHL, I want us to have 2,000 likes. 
And for the love of God, will people watch our videos, please? All right. Well, our show is brought to you by Hockey Locker, 2002 yeah. West Howard Avenue, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Like I said in the beginning of our video, you can call them at 414-800-7585. For Dan and Chris, we will be seeing you guys later. Also, check out our other videos, including um, our In the System video that we do covering everything Admirals and Predators. As far system. as the guys that are currently overseas. Correct. All right. Thanks for watching.